And I felt this stillness of, you know, when you're home and suddenly your shoulders drop, you're like, oh, okay, I feel at home. And I felt this in Ghana for the first time since a long, long time ago. So definitely Ghana is home for me now. My name is Elena. Uh, I am from Barcelona. I've been living in Ghana for a year and a half and uh, I am the co-founder of the Gaia Cup. Um, the Gaia Cup is a company that distributes uh, menstrual cups in, in Ghana uh, at affordable prices and that uh, provides workshops, menstrual health workshops uh, in rural environments uh, to fight uh, menstrual poverty and revert uh, taboo and menstrual stigma. I grew up in uh, Barcelona, uh, in Spain, and since a very young age I've always been uh, yearning to go on adventures, to discover the world, to see how people live uh, in other places. Uh, and so with 18 years old I went to live in India uh, and Uganda for six months. Uh, I was living in rural communities without electricity, uh, running water, whatever, and I found uh, that the sense of community was, was very present there and therefore I, I decided that in the future I, I wanted to, to go back to, uh, to Africa. After doing my studies in Paris, I lived in, uh, in Dakar, in Senegal, where I was working for the European Union. Then I worked for some private consulting in, in Africa as well, traveling around East uh, West Africa. And finally I came to Ghana two years ago to work uh, in microfinance. Three years ago, I worked uh, as an impact consultant, so I was measuring the social impact of different businesses around Africa. Uh, I had a chance to work with a lady from Tamale, who has a Shia butter cooperative. Uh, I worked with her for three months. Uh, I studied her business model. I interviewed the ladies who work in her Shia butter company. Uh, and I saw how, um, you know, the living wages they were earning by working with her were really allowing them to, um, you know, have better lives, have health care, uh, provide better, better education for, for the kids. I became very close with the founder of uh, this Shia Butter company. Her name is Aisha Husseini. As I started to 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 know her a little bit more, to talk about her, about her life, um, I really started to appreciate more, you know, the, the power and strength and courage that she had to overcome everything that was uh, thrown her way. And one day I read an article about uh, period poverty and at the time I've never heard of the term period poverty, didn't know what it was and to me it seemed very surreal that uh, I think such a spirit poverty exists because in my 20 soon eight years <laughs> on this earth it never occurred to me like not having money to afford for sanitary pads or tampons. Uh, the article was talking about uh, girls in Kibera slum, so a big slum in, in uh, Nairobi, uh, that were prostituting themselves in exchange for uh, sanitary pads. So at the time I was, I was working with Aisha and I asked her, um, is this real? Was the situation in Tamale? Was the situation where you live? And she confirmed that uh, it was happening and that most girls don't go to school when they are on their period, that they prostitute themselves in exchange uh, for pads, that they get a lot of infections, they use drug, they use cotton. And the fact that there's a lot of taboo and stigma around the topic uh, prevents the optimal resource allocation to solve the problem. So basically nobody's really talking about it because it's very shameful. So at that time I was using the, the menstrual cup, uh, so it's, um, it's a menstrual product that is reusable for 10 years. It's made of uh, medical silicon and um, basically I thought that this could maybe solve the problem of period poverty because you not only 
buy one and it lasts for 10 years, but you also don't need to dispose it anywhere. In most of rural schools, there are no bathrooms. Um, and it's just, I just thought that it was easy. So I offered her one menstrual cup and, and I told her, if you think that this can work, let's, let's do something. She tried it, she loved it. She called me back from Tamale. She said that this was gonna change the life of millions of girls and that we should bring uh, menstrual cups to Ghana. At the time I was living in, in, in Barcelona, I was working there, uh, and she said, I will pray to Allah for you to get a job in Ghana, to come here, and so we can develop this project together. And two months later, I got a job offer from uh, a Ghanaian, um, uh, yeah, in, in, in Accra. Uh, so I moved, I moved here, and it allowed me to start developing uh, the Gaia uh, cup on the side. In our workshops, when we say the word menstruation or period to girls, the first, say they, the first thing they say is uh, dirty. We wanted to change the narrative around menstruation, make them understand that it's actually a quality that we as women have. Um, you know, we are not linear, we are cyclical, we go through phases, and this allows us to have a lot of creativity. You know, the menstrual cycle is what gives life and so on. So, Basically, Gaia was the ancient Greek goddess of the earth. And so I thought, okay, why don't we call it the Gaia Cup? And we also transmit this idea of we women are carriers of the Gaia force um, to the girls when we're doing the workshop. So actually one of the, our main objectives when doing the workshops is really um, changing the, the mindset around menstruation and changing the mindset about what being a woman means and the real value of, you know, uh, being a woman. So, these are the menstrual cups. They come in a bag that is uh, made also from wax by a um, tailor in Tamale. Um, and they come in two sizes. So we have S and we have uh, L. So the, the size S is from girls from 12 years old until 30. Uh, who haven't had given birth and the size L is uh, from 30 up or women who have uh, given birth and basically the way that it works is that um, you fold it and then you insert it inside the vagina and then as you leave it it pops open um, it has some small uh, air holes and what they do is that once they are in contact uh, with the skin in the vagina, they create a suction. And basically, it doesn't, it doesn't leak because it's completely sealed. In order to remove it, you just need to break the seal. So you punch it and you remove it like this. And you can uh, throw the blood in the VC or in the shower. And then you rinse it with water and you, you insert it again. It's very important the first time to sterilize it in boiling water uh, for three minutes, three to five minutes. And after your period, you also sterilize it in boiling water because it kills all the bacteria. What we are uh, realizing uh, when we do the workshops is that actually girls, but also women, don't have knowledge about you know their anatomy. Uh, oftentimes they ask us, okay, but when, if we use it, how are we going to pee or can we move or so the questions that they ask are showing that, you know, they, they never got the opportunity to really learn uh, about their bodies, about, you know, how it works. So it's, um, these workshops have become sort of a safe, a safe place, a safe environment uh, for us to discuss about these things and, and many other. So the first workshop that we did was uh, last year in March 2020. Uh, we distributed uh, 140 cups in a school in uh, rural Tamale. Uh, today, one year later, 138 girls are using it. So the response was beyond what we could had uh, imagined. Since menstrual cup have four times more capacity than a pad or a tampon, the girls only need to change it once or twice a day and usually it's when they're showering at home so it really 
it raises a lot of problems uh, that they used to have and just creates a lot of mental space for them to, you know, carry on with their day and just forget even that they are they are having their their periods. Uh, we do partnership with schools or with organizations. We need to make sure that we deliver um, resources for them to understand how it works, you know, that we have people around who are going to be able to support them at the beginning if they have some doubts on how it works. Uh, trying to convince a Ghanaian woman that it's something safe, that it's something that is used by hundreds of millions of women around the world, that uh, every year more and more women are using it, um, that it's good for the planet, it's good for our bodies, it's good for the economy, and that there is really no reason of not uh, using it. And in the future, what we, what we would like to do is to produce and manufacture menstrual cups locally in Ghana. Um, at the moment, most of them are manufactured in China, some in the US, some in Europe. Uh, but we believe that not only there is a huge market uh, in Africa, uh, but also a huge social need. So every day, you know, the population is growing so fast. Every day you have millions and millions uh, of girls that are menstruating again. This is not the case in Europe. As the population is getting older and older, there's going to be less market. So both from an economic perspective and social perspective, it makes sense to bring such thing here, to manufacture it here, uh, hopefully to expand to to West Africa and to be able to create employment for, for women. Because at the end of the day, this is a poverty problem. Um, and if we, not, if we don't create jobs, if we don't um, try to make the entire value chain more sustainable and more fair, we are going to keep having the same problem. So we want to change the story from beginning to end, uh, have the factory here employ uh, women and hopefully c hopefully create a new industry for women by women and transform periods from a source of pain which is what it is now to a source of power to something that can actually uh, give them abundance and and wealth and opportunities so let me show you something this is the period game uh, it's a game that was developed by a, by a student in the US a couple years ago. It's a board game, but uh, with the menstru menstrual cycle. So the thing is that in order to play the game, you need to know how the menstrual cycle works. And we would like to, in the future, adapt it to the Ghanaian market uh, in order to teach kids and schools uh, about, you know, the period, but in a fun way, in a way that they don't feel like, you know, um, they are actually talking about girls things and you know um, basically how it works is that um, you go through uh, a life of a girl who is menstruating and so in some boxes for example she has a PMS so premenstrual syndrome uh, for example here she has uh, PMS cramps so you need to take one card against this card so maybe it's take some medication or put boiling water and I think you know for boys it's a good way to 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 learn and to respect uh, what's going on uh, with with women and it's a non shameful way you know it, it's fun it it places the the emphasis in something else which is competition and wanting to win uh, instead of you know learning about a menstrual cycle which can seem a bit uh, boring <laughs> Before coming to Ghana, I had worked with uh, some Ghanaian uh, businesses and Ghanaian people and I was always amazed because they were very, very friendly and very polite. And when I moved here, this is what I found. And I moved here at a very difficult period because it was just uh, during COVID, so two weeks before the lockdown. So basically I didn't know uh, many people. Uh, and it was a very vulnerable moment, you know, uh, but I really felt at home uh, here and I felt protected and I felt, you know, that the people around me cared uh, of me. So it's definitely something that is going to stay with me forever because I, I you know, I didn't spend this uh, challenging time, you know, by myself, but the people here really like open their arms to me and try to include me in as many things as possible and make sure that, you know, I was fine.